Yeah, when we when we think about a year ago from this weekend, you know, October 10th, we have that first really big ice storm that, that hit this north central Oklahoma. And, and what we're looking at this weekend is some really hot conditions. And, and while we've had some moisture across a, a good portion of the state, uh, a lot of that moisture is uh, was a little too little and, and a lot of it's starting to dry up with these temperatures we still have that are, that are relatively high for this time of year. So while that, that rain was a good reprieve, uh, uh, helped a lot of folks really start getting winter crops in the ground, um, it, it's gonna be only short lived. And so we're gonna need to continue to, that rain uh, on into the fall to, to make some of this stuff work. So, you know, speaking of, you know, like with winter crops, um, canola, the last time we spoke with you, we were expecting canola, like the, the acres to, to be more, but with this, these dry conditions, how do you think that's gonna impact the canola crop? Yeah, so as opposed to wheat that has this really long planting season, we can plant in September and we can graze it, we can plant all the way into November. Uh, canola has a very, very narrow planting window. We, we typically see our best canola go in that last week in September, first week in October. So we're kind of on the back end of that best timeline uh, for canola. And, and we typically need those really good, nice seedbed conditions. I, I think there's still a lot of potential, especially places that got a good amount of rain this last uh, week. Uh, places like here in Stillwater, where we only got a half inch and we're seeing that drying conditions and a lot of ground wasn't worked pre previous to that, that those moisture and we're working that ground, drying that ground out, then, then I, I think the canola acres or, or the potential acres will be a lot less than we maybe could have had if we had a lot, a lot wetter September. So I, I think there's still a place for canola. We, we have to remember that insurance deadlines, the, the 10th, um, we can stretch to the 15th and, and agronomically we can make the 15th work, especially if we have a nice warm fall with some moisture, we can, we can make a little bit later planting work if you're not insuring it. The other thing to think about is cover crops. Um, a lot of folks interested in cover crops and, and we really want those already to have been in. We want those to go in and cover the ground and provide good ground cover over winter on into the early spring. And, and once again, depending on what our fall brings us in uh, end of October, November, and December, um, if we're not you know warm with some good moisture, we're planting those cover crops now, we might not get the canopy coverage we really, really would like to see with a cover crop. So, and then a lot of our cover crops have broadleaf mixes to them. That's what adds the spice, you know, the nitrogen, the, the, the biotillage, something along those lines is, is typically brought in with our broadleafs. Once again, we don't know what's gonna happen in two weeks. We, we could hit a, a big freeze event. It could be 90 degrees still. The joys of Oklahoma. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah, but that, you know, that, that's the seed going into the ground. So really, you know, just real quick, let's kind of take a look back at some of our summer crops. How do, you know, how's that dry conditions, you know, impacting harvest and how are just summer crops shaping up? Well, harvest going a lot faster than we typically would expect based on where the crop was in July. The crop was a little bit behind pretty much universally across the board in July, but that was because we were, we were kind of cool. We had some of that good cloudy conditions. We got great rain. So we got a lot of growth in that early June, first of July. Well, when we got into August and that rain started shut out, we started seeing those crops kind of go towards harvest a lot faster than we typically would see. For the most part, something that was planted real early, think about some of our, our dryland corn acres downstate or dryland sorghum acres downstate. Those have been relatively unaffected. Actually, some of the reports I'm hearing are, are, are very good yields across the board. Those that are starting to come out now, think of our, our later planted milo or our soybean crop. That's where we're gonna start to take a hit. And, and once again, that's where you see the variability of the rain that happened this summer where you caught rain, the soybeans are, are, are looking good. Um, we had a plot that probably looked to be 60, 70 bushel potential. It's only cutting 20 or 30 bushels. So we lost a lot of that top end off because of that heat, uh, but also that moisture in August and September. And it's, it was just unrelenting. It was just constant heat and, and dry conditions. And, but but we're, we're gonna need some help if it's not too late on the, on the back end. All right, well, we'll check back in with you in a couple weeks. All right, thanks, Josh. Josh Lofton, Crop Assistant Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.